Hey guys, Matt with CJ Off-Road here. Today we have a really exciting product out on the table and it's something that I've been personally waiting for for a very long time. Now we first saw this Rugged Ridge snorkel at SEMA in 2018 and it has taken almost a year for this to become a fully production ready piece. Now today I've got all of the options that you can get for this snorkel out here on the table and we're going to show you a fully detailed installation video on our 2018 2 liter turbo JL Wrangler. Now what I like about this snorkel is that it's extremely sleek in the fact that it replaces the factory cow panel and it requires only about an hour's worth of an installation to get it done. It'll still utilize your factory airbox and give you clean and fresh air from a nice and high point without sacrificing having to drill into your brand new vehicle. Now we're going to get this installed on our two door and but first we're going to talk about some of the advantages of the snorkel over just keeping that factory airbox or installing a cold air intake. Let's do that next. Now this snorkel is going to work with both the 2.0 liter and the 3.6 liter engine. It's not going to work with the diesel because the air intake is on the other side of the vehicle, meaning that it's not compatible with it. One of the biggest benefits of a snorkel is getting nice cold fresh air from up above as compared to the air that's in your engine bay where it's going to heat up. You're going to see much better engine temperatures as well as cold air temperatures in your intake. Now the benefit of this over adding a cold air intake is that a cold air intake is going to open up this factory air box more and give you a new tube meaning that it's more vulnerable to water or hydro locking your engine. What a snorkel will do is completely seal this up from up above and it's going to eliminate the need to have to protect that air box from water getting in. It's not a completely waterproof option and you should never get up that high to where your snorkel is the only thing above water because there are a lot of other vital components under here that can get ruined, but the snorkel is going to allow you to reduce that risk by a whole heck of a lot. Now this Rugged Ridge snorkel is completely bolt-on with only a few modifications needed. So we're gonna go ahead and dig into this and show you how to get it done on your Jeep. So the first thing that you need to do is grab a 10 millimeter socket and zip off this bolt here. We do need to get this factory air box out. So grab that 10, zip this off quick, and set this aside as we will be reinstalling it. Now on the back of the two liter, there's going to be two plugs that go into the back of the air box, simply to press on the gray section and pull them out. After you have both of those out, we're gonna move on to the eight right here that attaches the soft hose to the air box. We'll pull that band clamp just off a little bit so we can pop this out of here. We're just gonna loosen it up. And there we go, we've got our air box out. Using a T30 Torx bit, we're gonna remove the four bolts that go on this cowl here. This will be set aside and not reinstalled, however the bolts will be reused. We've also already taken the antenna off. You can do that with a small adjustable. Ours was just a little stubby antenna, so we can reinstall it. Once you have this all on, you'll be able to reinstall the antenna. However, if you've got the factory one, just get a small adjustable and it'll pop right off. Now we can pull the cow panel off. We are gonna move this foam piece so that way our snorkel can go through here clearly. It's just held on by some glue. And uh, I guess one little push pin here, we'll yank that out. This won't be going back on, so you can just toss it. We're also gonna remove this 10 millimeter bolt. You will not be reusing it. So we'll go ahead and zip that off and we can set it aside in our bolt bin just to save for some other projects. And then what we need to do with this plastic fill panel is actually trim it right from this edge down and then over. So you just need to notch out about a half inch. There's a little line I just made in the mud there and then right over there. So we're just gonna trim that out and we'll be good to go. Now, Brennan bought a new uh, air saw from Snap-on. So he's gonna tackle this job because he wants to try it out. Now what we're gonna do is install the upper cow panel from Rugged Ridge. This will install the same way that the old panel come off. It'll fit nice and snug. Then we're gonna reuse all the factory bolts that we pulled out to get this tightened down. And you can do a final tighten right now too because it's not gonna be moved once we have this on. It'll all be from here down. Yeah. 
After you have that tightened down, we're gonna to start to work onto the inlet tube that goes over the relay box and the battery. Now we're back on the table here and we do need to make some modifications to the air box before we can get the entire inlet tube installed. First thing that we're gonna do is remove the four screws around the top of the air box. We can pull this off and remove the filter inside there. I'm gonna use an eight millimeter socket, but you can use a flathead screwdriver. Definitely set these aside as you will be reusing them. Now we're gonna remove the air filter. The induction tube on the air box has to be removed. The piece that comes with Rugged Ridge actually clips in down here. So to do that, just grab a small flathead screwdriver. So you're gonna pop the flathead screwdriver under there and push out on there to make sure that unclips. And we'll go around and do it to the other side as well. There's a total of four of these. So there's one on each side and then two kind of right here towards the back. So make sure you get those. Ours had a sticker actually covering them so we didn't even know they were there. So. There are going to be four holes left underneath here, and in order to make this completely airtight, we do need to silicone those shut. So we're gonna go ahead and grab some just regular black RTV or silicone, and go ahead and plug those, let it set up for a little bit, and then we can move on to the next step. Now after you have all four of those holes plugged underneath, the next step is to actually drill the hole, so that way you can release any water that's underneath here. Since it's gonna be completely airtight, they actually give you a check valve. Now you flip this underneath, and you'll have a sticker here. What you wanna do with that is mark, up above from there and drill a hole in this general vicinity. I like to use a regular bit first, and then this is the piece that's actually gonna go underneath there. So we need to drill it out to that size. So I'll grab a step bit and keep working my way up until I get the proper size. So using a step bit is a good way to get the proper size. You can see that we kind of just dug into this little section here, but we're gonna go ahead and set our angle piece in there. But before we do that, I'm actually gonna take some silicone and just go around the top of the threads here. That'll make this as airtight as possible. And after that's on, flip it over. So we did flip this over and put a little silicone on there plus the plastic nut. Now to get this tightened down, I'm just gonna use a small pair of pliers, as tight as I can get it by hand. This doesn't have to be crazy. That's just what's holding on the drain valve. So we've got a small drain tube and we'll push this onto the elbow we just installed, making sure it goes all the way over. the hose clamp on there and I like to kind of twist it up underneath there and then get that tightened down. After we have that on, next is going to be this T-fitting. First we'll slide another hose clamp over it. Slide that fitting on and this is what will actually release the water. Then we can get this band clamp tightened up on there as well. You're gonna look down this check valve and make sure that it's completely closed up. So we'll thread this all the way in and then we're good to go on this air box. So then you're gonna slide the seal over this first intake piece and this is what actually clips into your air box. So make sure it goes on the right way and is all the way down. Then we'll grab this piece and clip it into our air box. Make sure that it's clipped all the way around. That seal is nice and tight. Once you've got this first piece in, there is a push-in grommet that Rugged Ridge includes. That'll go right here and allow us to use the bolts to go through it. After we have all this installed, we're gonna go ahead and put it back into the Jeep and get all this pushed in first before we get to any of the other parts. So now that we've got this first section installed, we can go ahead and reinstall our factory air box. Okay, now what we can do is reinstall the bolt right here. This will be a 10 millimeter bolt that goes in there and we'll get that zipped down. Now we've got this portion of the air box installed, we can move on and start working on the tube that connects these two. So we've got our connection piece here and you'll notice that the shorter of the two rubber hoses is gonna go towards the front of the vehicle. I found that using a little soapy water definitely helps making these go on. And I will slide the band clamps on first, making sure that they're all facing the same way to give it a more uniform look. What I'm gonna do now is slide that band clamp back a little bit. And 
slide that on there. And then we'll go to the back. Slide that band, cl band clamp off of it a little bit. Once you have all the connections made, make sure it's completely tight. And then we put the band clamps on using an eight millimeter socket. So we set the air box into place. All we need to do is tighten up the four screws and hold the top of the lid down. Reconnect both of our hoses in the back if you've got a four cylinder. And then tighten up this clamp here that we loosened. All right guys, well about an hour and a half later and we've got this Rugged Ridge snorkel installed on our 2018 JL. Now right here you can see that I don't have anything on it, but we're gonna go ahead and show you both different options. You do have a high mount option as well as just a low mounted piece that goes on here, depending on the kit that you buy. Now you can buy this kit just with a low mount, you can buy it with the low mount and the high mount, or you can just buy the upper mount. So if you get this one, put the side mount on and decide, hey, I wanna make that taller or I wanna get the high mount, you can go ahead and do that afterwards. But overall guys, this is a really simple installation with only minor modifications required. And the fact that you get to keep your factory airbox is a really good perk of this. Compared to the Mopar snorkel where you have to cut into your hood and really modify a lot, this is a lot simpler. Plus it looks really clean once you put just that side mount on. But overall, if you're looking for this kit, as well as many other great parts for your JL, be sure to check us out at cjponyparts.com. Hope you enjoyed that video. To stay up to date on our CJ Off-Road videos, make sure to subscribe up top here. And for any other installs, make sure to click the link right above.